Hello, welcome to What the Flick. My name is Christy Lemire. This is William Bibiani. We are talking about a movie that opened last week, but they didn't screen it for us before opening day. It is called Mechanic Resurrection. It is the sequel to the remake of Mechanic, and it is a Jason Statham joint. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Please explain to us what Jason about. Statham is the mechanic. Once again, he faked his death at the end of the last movie, and now he's back for more stuff. Jessica Alba gets kidnapped. He kills a whole bunch of people. Let's take a look. The principal I represent has an offer for you. Each death must look like an accident. Your specialty, I believe. Not doing his kills. Bishop! I've been waiting too long to get even with you. You have 36 hours to eliminate all the targets on this list. Or they will eliminate me. Hmm. So, so, why is this a, well, also, do, yeah, you have a, a high number on this. Well, why reasonably is this a good, high. Why is yeah. this a good movie? Well, it's, okay, <laughs> I'm going to say this. I'm giving it a mixed high. Okay. Because Jason Statham has done an exceptional job over the course of his career of modulating my expectations. Okay. <laughs> I don't look, there's a handful of truly great Jason Statham movies, or at least wickedly entertaining Jason Statham movies. The original Crank, the first two Transporters, mm -hmm. safe, a handful. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of his stuff, there's a few real stinkers, but most of them are hovering around, that was all right. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was competent, and Jason Statham was a badass in it, and he killed a bunch of people right. in fun ways, and that's all I asked for. He does what you expect him to do. He's right? one of the last true movie stars. Not in that he opens a movie to $100 million, but that you go to a Jason Statham movie to see Jason Statham be some variation of Jason <laughs> Statham. He gives you exactly what you want, and then you go home. The mechanic resurrection is weird, though, because the first mechanic wasn't a huge hit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's not one of his more popular movies in general, so I'm not entirely sure why we're getting a sequel. Because he wanted to go to Thailand. I guess. He wanted to go on vacation at some cute little hut in Thailand. It was pretty cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this feels kind of perfunctory. In fact, the script is so kind of half-baked that it feels like this could have been a straight-to-video movie with some other actor playing the Jason Statham role. Mm -hmm. Like, just throw Scott Adkins in there or Gary Daniels or whatever. Or Sats Jason Statham. Yeah, they're, they're fine in their own right, but they're stuck in straight-to-video land. And this is just, they got just big, a big enough budget and just a big enough supporting cast. Like Tommy Lee Jones is in this at one yes. point. Jessica and, Alba, Michelle Yeoh. We're yeah. talking about Michelle Yeoh in um, Morgan. Yeah. She's also in this. There yeah, it's, go. a good, it's, a, it's a weird weekend for her. And it's weird because she shows up. So at the beginning of the movie, Jason Statham has faked his death. He's living pretty peacefully. And then a bunch of thugs come in and they just say, you know, we know that you faked your death and we'll tell the world uh, unless you kill these three people for like very under the radar. It's got to look like an accident. So the first thing they do is make a huge scene, take a gondola hostage, and they're just like, <laughs> well, this is stupid. Let's just run with this. So Jason Statham goes and runs off to his safe house and like, you know, the, the Bahamas somewhere with Michelle Yeoh and Michelle Yeoh goes to him at one point and says there's these guys they're beating up a woman played by Jessica Alba she doesn't say that but that's what's going on mm -hmm. and um, she says you have to do something I'm like you're Michelle Yeoh you do something nope she doesn't get to do anything she doesn't have to I think she's given up on it she just wants other people to do all the work mm -hmm. I kicked all that butt in Wing Chun <laughs> you you do some of the work for a while mm -hmm. and then he he gets he saves Jessica Alba it turns out Jessica Alba has got these weird connections to the bad guy and. They keep setting up all these plot points that you expect are going to go somewhere. Like, they keep talking about Jason Statham's father, and then you remember, oh yeah, Tommy Lee Jones is in the movie. Maybe he'll be playing his father, and there'll be some real drama there. No. Nope. Nope. Oh, Jessica Alba, like, oh, well, they made this whole big thing about how she used to be in the army, so it's weird that she got kidnapped and didn't even put up a fight. Maybe we'll find out that there's some kind of twist to Rue, and she's undercover, or she's working with the bad guy. No. Right, because she, they make a big deal about how she's beloved the children's, the children's refugee camp yeah. in Cambodia. Yeah. So also you think, like, if she has spent so much time traveling abroad for humanitarian purposes that she would have gotten some kind of training mm -hmm. or whatever. But no. they specifically say uh, she was in the army. Right. All, she was a badass. Yeah, she's a badass. Also, what other thing we're supposed to believe, which is hard to believe, is that they they do it, and now she's the love of his life. That's the sort of thing that happened. Right? I, I remember in the transporter, they had the same thing where Jason Statham slept with Shu Chi. And it was, it, Jason Statham has almost no romantic chemistry with anybody. <laughs> like maybe Amy Smart in the original Crank, but like that's it. Like mm. no one else, it, it always feels really, really false, which is why you know, I love the first two Transporter movies because there's this very intentional undercurrent that maybe his character is just gay. 
Uh, oh. And Louis Leterrier, the director of the second one, and the uncredited director of the first one, said that was always the intention. Interesting. So those two movies are actually got, have more going on than practically yeah. any other Jason Statham film. Um, and it sort of explains why he has all of this sort of forced interaction with femininity, because Jason Statham is not a romantic leading man. He always has this sort of steely, um, forced detachment mm -hmm. from everything going on. No matter, and that's one of the things we love about him, because in an action sequence, no matter how crazy it's going on, he's always just a little like, ugh. Tuesdays, you know, like, <laughs> he's doesn't matter. He's stoic. He kicks different ones up. But the Very thing is, stoic. The thing with this, though, is I found all these massive ass-kicking scenes kind of monotonous and redundant and boring. Like, it's the yeah. same thing. It's just like noise, noise, noise. Let's blow up another yacht. Let's mm. blow up a yacht that has a helipad on it, you know? <laughs> and and the, one, the one cool scene, I will say, is the underneath the floating swimming pool. Oh yeah, there's a swimming that pool. That was kind of cool. There's a swimming <laughs> pool with a see-through bottom that, that's at the top of a skyscraper that's, that's overhanging the street. That's where you want to swim. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> badass, but you can kind of see where that's going to go wrong. Like, oh, I wonder what my ironic death is going to be. Excuse me while I take a, a dip in my swimming pool of death. Um, th that's true, and it's one of the things about this film that, again, I feel like this script was very much could have been done very, very low budget. You could have done this for like $1 million and then it goes straight to video, but then it's like, oh, we can get this theatrical. We got Jessica Alba somehow. Um, mm -hmm. She's not doing anything else this week. Mm -hmm. So they threw a little bit extra money at it and we got a few bigger set pieces. There's a cool bit, I like the, the final climax, um, the big climactic shootout on the boat. Has some fun stuff in it. There's this cool bit where he like chucks a grenade into a hot tub and then throws a bunch of people into the hot tub <laughs> so they all blow up at once. And I was like, that's kind of neat. That's kind of fun. You're making this sound way more fun than it actually is. And I have to admit, I kind of like Tommy Lee Jones in it because it's a very different Tommy Lee Jones he, role. He's alive. Right. I've seen so many Tommy Lee Jones movies lately, especially like the Bo Jason Bourne, which is just awful. Mm. And he's just asleep. Right. He's just there. He's collecting his paycheck. And I don't know how... They got him to like wake up and give a really good, fun performance in the Mechanic Resurrection. Right. Uh, they, he must have been good friends with someone on there. I don't know what it was, yeah. but he, you know what he's playing? He's playing like his villain from the first Under Siege if he had survived, because he's cool. He's got a soul patch and earrings. And earrings. And he's, he's yeah, like he's kind of vaguely effeminate, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. there's he's, something kind of dangerous about him, like in a fun, playful way. Yeah, I don't know if effeminate makes him dangerous, but like he's just he just he's not in the same movie. He's not taking himself too seriously. He's just this really interesting, odd, bizarre individual in a movie that's kind of full of cliches. There's this weird bit at the beginning where Jason Statham finds out who the bad guy is, and he's. Jessica Alba asks him, why is he after you? And he's like, well, it's probably because of all these reasons. And he just <laughs> he just he just sort of hypothesizes some some bullshit uh, motivation. And then at the end, the bad guy's like, wait, don't you want to know why I did it? And he was like, well, it's all those bullshit reasons I said in act one. And the bad guy's like, oh yeah, 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 that was it. Yeah, you can kill me. Like it, it's nothing. It never goes in an interesting direction. But it is, here's the thing though. I don't expect it to be interesting. It's going in this very workmanlike, straightforward, straight shooting direction. That's just here, here's what we promised you. We get three cool kills, a uh, couple of cool action sequences, a um, bunch of non-sexual chemistry between Jason Statham and his co-star, which at this point is practically a trope. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you'll have a, a little bit of fun. And I had a little bit of fun. I enjoy this sort of mid-range action movie <laughs> where you don't spend two hundred million dollars on it. You don't spend one million dollars on it. You spend I don't know what they did, maybe fifteen. I don't know what the budget was, but it looks like they spent a little money. They get a couple of cool action sequences right. in an otherwise very 1970s sort of action thriller plot where it's kind of high concept and then they move on. And I had a decent enough time. Right. I wouldn't I wouldn't tell non-Jason Statham fans to seek it out because it's not a great example of his work. But as a Jason Statham fan, talking to Jason Statham fans, <laughs> this is okay. Yes. Yeah, if, this if is are, all right. If you are a Jason Statham completist, and we know you're out there, then yes. you should probably go see it. What is your number? Uh, I guess I could give it a 6.3, yeah. which is not high praise or anything like that, but it's an adequate watch. It's an okay matinee. 2.5. I was bored. I found it pummeling and numbing. I was not happy. Pummeling um, and numbing is, is, is a <laughs> good thing in a Jason Statham. It's his bread and butter. Yeah. It's, his, it's his oeuvre, if you will. Yeah. So um, our average is a 4.4. It's at 23%. On the tomato meter. So again, if it's like a Saturday afternoon matinee thing and you've got to see Jason Statham, you have an opportunity to do it. Bye bye.